Hi, this is John. This video is on choosing a motor for your rocket. The rocket we're going to use as an example is an Estes Knight Smoke, but the process is pretty much the same for model through high power rockets. I'm standing in the shop, but most of this video is going to be on the computer, so bear with me through the screen captures. Before we can simulate effectively, we need the weight of the rocket ready to fly. So prepare your rocket, everything ready to fly except for the motor, and get a weight. We also want to get the center of gravity. So find the balance point and mark it with a pencil. Now we can measure from the tip of the rocket to the center of gravity point and record that value. Now with the key values measured directly, we can head into the computer. To get an idea of the motors that might be available for your rocket, a good place to start is thrustcurve.org, which is an online database with all the certified motors and data used for simulation. We can browse for motors and examine them by category. For example, ours is a mid-power rocket. We still see a lot of options. Let's try narrowing it down to single-use motors and 29 millimeter. There are still quite a few motors available, so we can browse through this list or we can try the motor guide. The motor guide is kind of the inverse process. You enter some basic information about your rocket and then let the site find motors for you. Here are some motors that look like they might work with your rocket. There's still a lot of options, but now you have some idea of how your rocket might perform. Let's look and find one that seems like a good fit. This G88 gives us over a thousand feet of altitude and is nice and safe in terms of thrust to weight ratio. So thrust curve suggested a height of about 1,080 feet and a delay of about six seconds but let's run a real simulation to verify those numbers. The program I'm familiar with is Rocksim by Apogee Components, but there's also Open Rocket, which is free software. You can create the rocket design file yourself, or you can find one already made. A good place to look for them is rocketreviews.com, which is where I found this design ready to go. Rocksim will calculate the mass and center of gravity from the components that you entered in your design. However, it's better to override those guesses with the measured values once your rocket is complete. This also means that you don't need to be so precise about every little component inside the rocket because you're going to put the measured values in for the simulations. Now we're ready to do a simulation. Let's choose our motor find the CTI G88 and launch it. Here are our results about the same altitude as thrust curve thought. Let's look at the details of the simulation. Scroll down, find the optimal delay and here it's seven seconds. So if we have an adjustable delay system we can choose this exact value if we have a fixed set of delays to choose from, we choose the closest one. If we want to use motors that we don't already have data in Rocksim 4, we can find those data files on thrustcurve.org and load them in. Other rocket simulators work nicely as well. You might give Open Rocket a try if you haven't already purchased Rocksim. So now you can get an idea of the wealth of motors available, and I've shown you a technique to quickly pick motors for your rocket given the tools that are available. So that's enough to go out and make some smoke. If you're interested in a little more details about how motor selection is done internally, stability, minimum thrust to weight ratios, etc., keep watching. Of course the relatively trivial aspect of motor selection is related to size. 
you have the diameter of the motor mount tube. The Nike Smoke uses a 29 millimeter motor tube, so you're not going to get a 38 or a 76 inch motor in there. But a little bit more interesting is the length. Model rockets tend to use 18 or 24 millimeter motors, and they tend to be a fixed length. So you have a motor hook, and all the motors fit that. As you move into mid power and high power, that's no longer the case and motor length varies, but you're still going to have some maximum length that your rocket can accommodate. Now the more interesting aspect of motor selection is related to choosing a motor with enough thrust to make your rocket fly straight. We need enough thrust to generate enough speed before the rocket leaves the launch guide so that the fins can be effective. In free rockets, ones that are just stabilized with fins, the airflow across the fins is critical. If the rocket starts angling, the air pressure on this side of the fin increases, which tends to provide a counterforce. This is how fins work. So, we need our motor to accelerate the rocket quickly enough so that the fins can take effect before the rocket leaves the launch guide. Now there's a well-known rule of thumb, which is to make sure the average thrust of your motor is at least five times the weight of the rocket. This is attempting to collect a bunch of factors and provide a simple rule of thumb for choosing motors. This is a good option if you're out at a launch site picking a rocket motor when the one that you had planned for wasn't available, but if you have time to do simulations, take a look at other motors that might not fill that requirement just to make sure that they actually do fly safely. Because thrustcurve.org and the simulators don't only use this rule of thumb, they actually verify that the speed of the rocket off the launch guide is sufficient and that might give you access to more motors that the rule of thumb may have eliminated. Okay, so let's take a look at our rocket on the pad. Gravity constantly pulls down on the rocket. In the case of a one pound rocket, this is about 4.5 newtons of force. During the motor burn, it provides a force propelling the rocket upward, varying over its burn. This variation is called the thrust curve. The guide is only effective while both launch lugs or rail buttons are engaged. So here's the thrust curve for the G88. Here's the point where the thrust exceeds the weight of the rocket. You can see the average thrust is quite high for a G motor, about 10x in the thrust to weight ratio. And correspondingly, the burn time is quite short, under a second. And among much other information in the RockSim simulation details, we can see that the minimum guide we'd want to use with this motor would be 39 inches. So I hope that's given you some more insight into motor selection for rocketry. Beyond the kit manufacturer's motor recommendations, to the internet tools that pick motors for you automatically, to the underlying theory and what the real requirements are for picking a motor that will lift your rocket safely. Happy flying!